Okay, so I guess many people are upset about the Figma decision to limit their starter plan. And I can understand that, because if somebody tells you that something is free and you get used to it and it takes you a year or two of using it and then suddenly they want money for it, you may feel cheated, but it's just business and they really need to make money. They need to pay those investors back multiple times. So today I'm going to tell you about two Figma alternatives, mostly for Windows. One is multi-platform and also about one potential way to cheat your way out of paying for Figma and still use it with most of the features. And I have no idea if this is going to work, but they did promise one thing. They said that those changes, those limitations to the starter plan will actually happen from that 21st of April onward. So let's just think about it for a second. Imagine that you create a thousand different files in Figma and all of them just make 12 or 20 or 50 pages in every one of them. And you'll have enough files to start inviting collaborators because that's going to be unlimited and you'll be able to actually work just fine. So you still have a month to try that and I have no idea if this is going to work. They might limit it in some way or maybe it just won't work at all. And I think this is worth a try because if it works, you'll be able to work in Figma without paying for a couple of years longer and well, they'll need to rethink their promises because that's how it works. That's business. But if it doesn't work, don't worry, because if you like Figma so much that you used it for those years, maybe paying for this is not really such a bad idea because running those cloud servers is expensive and you should be aware of that. So uh, if you're making projects for clients, you can just add those 12 bucks a month to their bill, basically. And I think it's just common sense that you need to use software that's professional and that means mostly paid ones because that's how it works. But let's also look at the alternative because there's currently at least two apps that are free, maybe even more of them, and you can use them to some limited extent to maybe replicate some of your Figma workflows and still avoid pain. So I'm going to test Penpot and Lunacy and both are free currently so you can use them without any problems. But they are pretty limited compared to what you're used to. So there will be some sacrifices here. But if you're happy to live with those sacrifices, you might actually have found your solution already. But before we begin the testing, here's a little disclaimer. I've been working in the design industry since the late 90s, so it's over 20 years now. And over the years, I worked on hundreds of products for huge companies, banks, finance, and so on. So my workflows here are to test if these apps are valid to actually work professionally on like a level that you could use for professional high paying clients. So testing Penpot first, and as you can see, it has a very nice background in the new Morphic style and some videos. And they also mentioned that the app is in the alpha stages. So that means we shouldn't really have our expectations here too high, but we know what we can expect in the future updates by judging it for what it is today. And they are taking a very similar approach to Figma here with a web-based version that you can access from anywhere and you can collaborate with other people from anywhere in the world. Okay, so let's dive in. After you create a free account, you can start making things. So I just create an artboard and I make a rectangle. And the first thing that I want to do is to add some additional points to the vectors here. So I press enter and this happens. So obviously it's still an alpha. So this is something that probably will go away soon. But currently I didn't really find a way to actually add any points to that shape. Trying out the pen tool compared to other tools, I guess I don't really know the keyboard shortcuts because I had no idea how to make a straight line right here. And this action is very easy with just a shift key in Sketch and Figma. So as you probably know, I always say that doing UI design is basically all about moving rectangles around. And in here, creating a rectangle and then modifying its properties is pretty easy and pretty straightforward. So making some changes to make it look a little bit like an app, but I'm not really going to be designing an app. One thing that I always test in a new tool is how it handles shadows. And in general, this works very well. One thing that I noticed is that you can't really make a negative spread value. And this is something that I use quite a lot in Sketch. And it's really helpful to make some of the shadows look more natural and softer. Adding text is pretty simple and I think that this text tool actually works better than the one that was in the very initial versions of Figma. It's somehow a little bit more faster and the rendering of the text looks better. 
And it is pretty robust. I found all the options and all the extra settings for the text tool that I'm used to using often in Sketch. So everything that I use on a daily basis is still here. While creating rectangles, I had some trouble with actually creating squares, like a uniform shape that you normally achieve by holding shift. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. I have no idea why. And of course it is possible to round all the corners or just individual ones. And since I liked the shadow that I did for the header here, I wanted to copy the style to the new rectangle, but I couldn't really find that option. So I guess for now, copying properties doesn't really work. So it might be faster to actually duplicate the rectangle from the top, add the rounded corners and modify it. That way we keep the nice shadow. Another thing that I found missing here is pressing the Alt key didn't really show me the distance to the artboard edge and this is one of the most common things that I use to set the spacing for an app. So in some cases it actually did work like in this case but one thing that I found most useful about how Sketch handles this is that you can hold the Alt key and then press Command and Arrows to actually enlarge the object while still seeing the distance from the edges. That will help you be a lot more precise. I wanted to test glass morphism here as well, but currently the app doesn't have the background blur feature, only Gaussian blur, so this is something that I didn't really test. That's why I'm going for this very minimal, simple layout. So the next step that I wanted to test is how masking works and adding images. So I'm creating a rectangle for the mask, then adding an image from mesh gradients, and then trying to mask that image within the mask shape. And it did work, but it's doing something pretty weird here, because if you're selecting the object, you can still see like the entire object. I guess this might be by design, but it might also be a bug. Duplicating the mask shape and modifying the image position within that worked fine, but then something really weird happened when I clicked and tried to duplicate the text layer. As you can see, the mask expanded and that kept happening to me all throughout the rest of my testing. The next thing that I wanted to test is how prototyping works. So I duplicated the artboard and it duplicated in place so it covered the previous one. This is something that they need to definitely improve. I enlarged the card on the right and simply created a prototype in which you click on the first shape to go to the second screen and then you click on that shape again to go back. So like a very simple scenario of a back and forth between two screens. And it worked just as you expected. You go to the prototype tab and simply select an object and then just drag this handle to the screen that you want the object to point to. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Doesn't really have any ways of choosing the animation type or the transition time or anything like that. But it does work. You can click on the object, go to the next screen, then click on the other object and go back. Commenting works pretty nicely, it works very similar to how Figma does it, but you can't really mention people, so I guess for now you just need to have like a very simple threaded discussion. And yes, you can check off comments as done, or just delete them. Replying works as well, I didn't really test it with anybody else, but I understand that this app is gonna be built on similar principles of actually collaborating with many other people, so this is yet to be tested. For now I wanted to see how it works in like a solo project. So the bottom line here is this. Penpot is pretty powerful for an alpha version and in some cases it's actually beyond what Figma offered in their alpha stages, but it's still not really yet there to have a professional workflow in it. But I suggest you follow them because at this rate, this app is gonna improve in no time and it's gonna be a very nice and versatile replacement for Figma. And the fact that it's browser-based makes it multi-platform, so it's gonna be a nice way to collaborate with the Mac users and the Windows users and Linux and anything else. So yeah, I think that in the alpha version, this app is really not yet ready to be a valid replacement for Figma Sketch or anything else. But give them time, because I think that they're heading in the right direction. The next app is Lunacy, which is a native Windows app that's free on the Windows Store or you can just download it for your computer if you don't use the Windows Store. It's done by the guys from Icons 8, which is a very popular icon library. And what is interesting about it is that it reads and saves Sketch files. And Sketch is Mac only, so it means that they reverse engineered Sketch files and Sketch plugins as well because you can use them. And they claim that the app is two times faster than Figma which is pretty interesting because from my experience it actually seems faster. I only have a gaming PC and I don't really use it for design, so it was pretty new for me to actually even install a design app on that PC. So let's jump in and see. 
And here again, I'm doing the very similar testing scenario when I do some rectangles, some text fields, some shadows, some very basic things that all of the apps really need. So all the types of the gradients are here and the app actually looks like it's very robust, like it has a lot of options. And from my very quick playthrough with it, I think that it does. It's pretty powerful. And here you do have a choice of a background blur. So naturally, I'm going to test some glass morphism just to see how it looks like. And it looks exactly as expected. It just works. Adding points on the stroke gradient works as well. So when coming from sketch, this actually is the closest to that native, very fast design experience that I'm really used to. And in many regards, it's actually better and faster than Figma. Prototyping here works a little bit differently because here you create hotspots on top of the object. So you can't really link an object, you just create an invisible rectangle and you link that. But you do have a couple of options of animation, pretty basic ones, but still it's a start. I tested some basic comments here and they also work just as expected and also they don't really have mentioning other people or I couldn't really make it work. Adding an image has a dedicated menu button and I think it's a pretty good idea actually. And of course dragging and dropping the image from your desktop still works and copying and pasting it from an external location works as well. What I found the most interesting about Lunacy is those little things, those little creative additions that the developers added to it. So it's very similar to Figma and Sketch or Sketch especially like those magnets on the side of the text tool that you can use to left or right align the text without going to the menu. And it's a little bit faster, I can say that. The vector path tool has a little bit of a learning curve and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is pretty powerful and I think that it does have, I guess, all the features that I need, so it's fine on that front as well. Another cool and pretty creative feature is to have a dedicated icon in the main menu to add avatars. And you can modify their shapes and everything else, so it makes it a little bit faster to create lists of people. And that's something that many products use. For quick prototyping, you can also drag and drop some simple components that are pre-made. Things like checkboxes, radio buttons, text fields and so on. And you can also modify them or create your own. So if you're using very similar components for your wireframes, for example, or for some mid-fidelity projects, this is going to be super handy. And of course, since it's Icons 8, obviously they do have an extensive icon library built in. And if you log into the account that you have on Icons 8, you can use even more of them. And it's as simple as drag and dropping. I also tried making some simple components, not really nested ones because I didn't really have the time for that now, but it seems to be working just fine. One little bug that I found is that when you go to prototype mode and you have background blur, it actually doesn't show in the preview. So if you're clicking through the prototype, those background blurs or the glass morphic elements are just going to be plain old transparency. And as for collaboration and all the features that Figma users really love, I think that you can use Sketch Cloud here. So a lot of the real-time collaboration and feedback and commenting is actually coming to Sketch Cloud pretty soon. So overall, I have to say that I'm very impressed with Lunacy. I don't really use Windows to design, but it's like a version of Sketch for Windows that uses some Windows paradigms, which is good because the UI should be really very connected to the system to be easier to use. It's very fast and it has a lot of those little creative additions that none of the other apps even have. So I think that Sketch should probably just buy this app and make a Windows version out of it and take some of those cool ideas to the Mac version as well. Good job, Lunacy. And keep in mind that these apps are still in their pretty early stages, so they're gonna improve and hopefully they're gonna stay free as well. And even if they go the Figma route and just release it for free for a couple of years and then start charging you, that's fine, because you'll have a couple more years of free software. And maybe somebody is going to make another app then. So if you can afford it, I suggest you pay for Figma or Sketch or any tool that you're using, because those are professional tools. You use them to make money. So just add it to the bill and that should be fine. And if you prefer not to pay, try out these alternatives or try out that Figma hack that I told you about and let me know how it works. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video and I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.